Dr. Harrison, we know that the treatment landscape for MPN is rapidly changing and keeping up with the pace of the developments can be challenging, both for healthcare professionals and certainly for patients and their families. So I was wondering if you can give us a general overview of the treatment landscape and maybe highlight anything that's new and in development that you think would be helpful for the audience. Well, sure. I think, you know, this is obviously really interesting, very important. It's a fast moving field. And one of the first changes actually completely hot off the press is a brand new diagnostic criteria that have been produced um, by two separate groups that are shortly about to be published. We've kind of just seen pre-published and those of us that have been privileged to be involved have seen them. So that's going to really focus the mind of clinicians on how do we achieve a diagnosis. And that's the first thing that's really important. Get an accurate diagnosis. Don't just accept, well, you've got an MPN. Actually, it's really important to know what type you've got maybe as much detail as possible in terms of the genetic mutation or change that underlies the disease, because that's increasingly important in what we call prognostication, understanding what the risk of events happening due to the disease actually is. When we make a diagnosis, we sometimes can't be accurate and we might have to go back and revisit that. And so some patients don't get a PVET or MF diagnosis, they might get an MPN unclassified. That's okay, but it's important to keep revisiting that. Once we've made a diagnosis, then it's really important to think about what the risk is to the patient. And we've had some changes to our risk classifications recently. Right from the um, ET end of the spectrum, where we're thinking more and more actually those patients who are under the age of 60 with a low account and a CALAR mutation. Do we even need to give you aspirin because we might be increasing your risk of bleeding? To the other end of the spectrum for patients with myelofibrosis and more aggressive disease, we want to know more about your mutational profile. So we're doing more powerful genomic tests and assessing then your prognosis and then what the features of your disease are that need treatment. And there are lots of changes, which I think we'll get into later in our conversation here and lots of new options, which are really important. I just also don't want to leave this segment without saying to all of you who are listening, it's important that you understand your disease. It's important that you understand the diagnosis, prognosis, et cetera, and you get the best care. But it, that's maybe not enough. You need to know that you're taking good care of you. And that's um, something that's really important to all of us. So you need to know that you're managing your vascular risk. Don't just think about your blood. Think about the fact that, you know, if you're smoking, quit smoking. If you're drinking too much, cut it down. If you're not walking enough, walk more, lose weight. The majority of patients with MPN actually have a problem with a blood clot not a further complication of their disease. So maybe we'll stop there and then we can dive in a bit more deeply. 